All right, the seventh FBI background check into Judge Kavanaugh is finished. It's wrapped, and now a confirmation vote for Judge Brett Kavanaugh could come as early as Saturday. President Trump, he's looking forward to this vote. Democrats have been trying to destroy Judge Brett Kavanaugh since the very first second he was announced. And he was announced for one simple reason. He is an incredible intellect, an incredible person, an incredible talent. He's been an incredible judge because they know that Judge Kavanaugh will protect, uphold, and defend the Constitution of the United States as written. And tonight, many U.S. senators, they are on the fence, but they're responding positively to today's FBI's report. According to Senator Jeff Flake, a swing vote, the FBI's report revealed zero new evidence against Kavanaugh. Senator Collins of Maine, another crucial swing vote, praised the investigation for being very thorough. Here is the bottom line. If both Flake and Collins vote in favor of Judge Kavanaugh, he will be a Supreme Court justice. And today, at a very fiery press conference, Senate Republicans had this to say about the impending vote and this horrific process. Take a look. What we know for sure is the FBI report uh, did not corroborate any of the allegations against Judge Kavanaugh. This is the 87th day. Uh, that's three weeks longer than the average of the last three or four nominees to the Supreme Court. So don't tell me we haven't spent enough time. What I've been dealing with since July the 10th, the downhill slope that Schumer's put us on, is really dealing with the demolition derby. And we're, they just about destroyed a good person to be on the Supreme Court. A vote against Judge Kavanaugh tomorrow will be a, confirma uh, a vote for abusing the confirmation process and a good person. And it will be a vote for the shameful intimidation tactics that have been employed as part of an orchestrated smear campaign. This is a <coughs> search and destroy mission. This is not a search for the truth. And tonight, it is important to remember, more documentation was provided to the Senate Judiciary Committee than any other Supreme Court nominee in history. And so far, this nomination process is the third longest in the past 50 years. But tonight, the smear merchants on the left are in full-on freakout mode. Senate Democrats all demanded an FBI investigation to be done quickly with limited scope. Just last week, they're now trashing that very same FBI investigation. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez, he called it a BS investigation on Twitter. Now, naturally, the whining continued when there's a television camera in front of these, well, publicity-hungry Democrats. Take a look. We Democrats had many fears that this would be an all-too-limited process that would constrain the FBI from getting the facts. Having received a thorough briefing a few minutes ago, our fears have been realized. This set of interviews is, at best, most charitably, woefully incomplete. To put it bluntly, it smacks of a whitewash, even a cover-up. In your view, is this a fulsome and credible investigation? It's obviously a cover-up. They're making a mockery of the constitutional requirement that the Senate provide its advice and consent. That report, if it, that's an investigation, is a b investigation. Every one of these Democrats were against Judge Kavanaugh or anybody that President Trump would have nominated to the court. Now, in this program, while we have exposed the few the few top echelon in the FBI that did abuse their power. We have always made a point, almost on a nightly basis, to stand up for the rank and the file, FBI agents, field agents, you know, the ones that risk their lives, like other law enforcement, for us every single day, including those that conducted the supplemental background check. The FBI acted in a fair, independent manner. Some on the left don't like the results. The calls for a more thorough investigation is beyond absurd. What is the FBI supposed to do? 
We don't have a location to investigate, no date to investigate. There's no physical evidence, there's no forensic evidence, and we don't even know the day of the week. And every single person that Professor Ford listed to corroborate her story denied any knowledge of her claims. And the one eyewitness that she listed totally refuted her claim. Even her longtime friend had no idea what she was talking about. They all refuted her claims under penalty of perjury, now twice. The other allegations against Kavanaugh, they're even more shaky. The second accuser making decades-old claims that Kavanaugh had exposed himself at a freshman in college at a party, well, she wasn't even sure that Kavanaugh was the perpetrator. Even the New York Times wouldn't publish her claims, and they searched far and wide for evidence to corroborate her story. They found nothing except that she had been making calls to other Yale classmates at the time saying, I'm not sure it's him, do you remember? And the third accuser making systematic drugging, gang rape allegations against teenage girls. And her story has changed many times in about a week. She's facing serious credibility issues and, of course, represented by Michael Avenatti, you know, lawyer of the year. None of these allegations have dates, locations, witnesses, evidence, corroboration of any kind of any of these claims. So do Democrats really expect the FBI to magically find decades-old evidence proving that Kavanaugh was an evil, sexual predator, a systemic gang rapist, somebody that drugged teenage girls? They really believe the American people would suspend all decency, all common sense, and a belief that a man with an impeccable 40-year track record was really secretly a monster in his youth and did this almost on a weekly basis? In reality, this has always been about politics and power, a delay tactic, a transparent attempt to literally ruin a man's life, destroy his family because they lost an election and they want the power. This has become a national disgrace. And in some cases, these political tactics worked. Democratic senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp, by the way, now down 11 in the latest poll, claimed to be an independent voice for the people of North Dakota. Tonight, we know she's nothing more than a shill for Schumer and the Democratic Party. Now, I guess she assumes she's not getting reelected, so she's trashing the will of her own constituents and voting no. Then you got Joe Donnelly, Indiana, also a no vote. By the way, he's up for reelection in 33 days. By the way, Indiana voters, you can send him a message and get out and vote. Now we're seeing the Democratic Party play, literally, their playbook roll out in full force. Everything that we have chronicled on a regular basis on this show, as we now begin our 23rd year on the Fox News Channel, 30 in radio, it's, it's now a big crescendo into one of the most despicable displays than anything we have ever witnessed. And I warned you, they're going to try and bore Kavanaugh or whoever the president picked, and they'll bring back the Clarence Thomas tactics. The smear machine of the left is in full gear. They know no bounds. And some on the left are actually claiming, well, okay, our allegations didn't work. Let's go after Judge Kavanaugh's temperament. That might be disqualifying. You're saying he was just too aggressive when defending himself against false allegations of drugging and gang raping teenage girls. Ask yourself this question. Okay, how would you react? if you were falsely accused of rape, of drugging, teenage girls happened almost on a every other every weekend basis, gang raping them, boys lining up in the halls, how would you react? What is the appropriate reaction? How would you react if senators were on national TV calling you evil, comparing you to Bill Cosby, suggesting that you're guilty of serious crimes you never committed? Far left, retired Justice John Paul Stevens weighing in. Oh, this should disqualify him from becoming a justice. This is the same radical former Supreme Court justice who doesn't believe in the Constitution. He once demanded the Second Amendment be repealed and wrote that the election of George W. Bush violated our Constitution. And just moments ago, Judge Kavanaugh, in an op-ed just released for the Wall Street Journal, he eloquently defended himself on the eve of what will be a historic vote. This is a tipping point for this country. He talked about these ridiculous allegations. He wrote, quote, 
After all those meetings and after my initial hearing concluded, I was subjected to wrongful, sometimes vicious allegations. My time in high school and college, more than 30 years ago, has been ridiculously distorted. My wife, my daughters have faced vile and violent threats. And against that backdrop, I testified before the Judiciary Committee last Thursday to defend my family, my good name, my lifetime of public service. My hearing testimony was forceful and passionate. That is because I forcefully and passionately denied the allegations against me. He continued, yeah, I was very emotional last Thursday, more so than I've ever been. I might have been too emotional at times. Well, I know that my tone was sharp. I said a few things I should not have said. He did apologize once in the hearings. I hope everyone can understand that I was there as a son, a husband, a dad, and I testified with five people foremost in my mind, my mom, my dad, my wife, and most of all, my two daughters. Now, sadly, this kind of common sense and logic and decency from Judge Kavanaugh, it means nothing to the left. How would you respond? By the way, it means nothing to their cohorts, their friends in the mainstream media. You got all the people on the left whining, crying, complaining. Those that believe in guilt by accusation, just doing what they do best today, feigning outrage. By the way, when did any of these people on the Judiciary Committee, the snowflakes in the floor of the Senate being taken out all day, did they ever protest Bill Clinton like this? Did they ever stand up for Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey? Paula Jones, oh, that's right, Dianne Feinstein, who recommended uh, Deborah Katz. Well, Deborah Katz didn't believe Paula Jones. Oh, it was only 10 or 12 minutes. So you have a lot of hypocrisy, feigned, selected moral outrage. And today you have far-left protesters erupting all over Capitol Hill. And as you can imagine, emotions were running high. Logic was running very low. We even sent our own Griff Jenkins down to the middle of all this, in the middle of the mob, asking these people, what they thought about due process, the presumption of innocence, the rule of law. The answers will stun you. Take a look. This is a job interview. There's no presumption of innocence in a job interview. Do you believe that uh, he was given a fair chance in his confirmation? A fair chance? This man is sitting amongst friends of his. Clearly there has been enough allegations swirling around that we know that this job application needs to be denied. The public is the people who should be making decisions about what they need and what they deserve. Not some rich white man who doesn't give a about us. In my view, Judge Kavanaugh made it pretty clear that he does not have the judicial temperament. He believes the Supreme Court is just one more political football. That's not what the Supreme Court is about. And I think in that hearing, Judge Kavanaugh disqualified himself. No presumption of innocence, no due process. Well, let me tell you, if that's the case, there's no country. There's no constitution. It's sad, it's shocking, and it's frankly beyond chilling. Now, coming up, we're going to have a lot more of Griff, including his full interview with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Now, today, she led this horde of demonstrators demanding that Kavanaugh's life and reputation continue to be destroyed without these fundamental beliefs that we as Americans should all share, regardless of political orientation. You have to have some corroboration. There's got to be some evidence, some presumption of innocence. The only good news tonight is the left, well, they've officially been exposed to the American people. See those protesters? You're looking at the modern, radical, left, Democratic Party and the media, the party of double standards, the party of smears, lies, character assassination, family bludgeoning with no plans to offer the hardworking, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens, you, the American people who make this country the single greatest, best, last great hope for man on this earth. Look what they do. The people, that's not the people of this country. That is one party, though, sadly, that has abandoned any sense of fundamental decency, fairness, and common sense. Now, thankfully, you, the American people, it has now awoken a lot of people in this country. Look at this Rasmussen poll on President Trump. It's his highest approval rating ever. According to an NPR poll of all places, remember the Democratic enthusiasm, blue wave edge that they had? It's totally evaporated today. At this hour, we're seeing the chaos, the mayhem, the madness, the insanity. You got the leaders of the Democratic Party, a full-on assault on the integrity of the FBI. They've so convinced their party activists 
about guilt upon accusation that that's fine in America. No due process is fine in America. No presumption of innocence is fine. How does that work for you and your family in your life? Slander, smear, character assassination, that's one party in America today. Great job, Dianne Feinstein, Chucky e. Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters. Do you want them in power in 33 days? Now the American people, now the people that they're leading, causing the pandemonium in our nation's capital because their so-called leaders convinced them that guilt by accusation is okay, that, that defining somebody as a rapist, a gang rapist, a drugger of teenage girls without cooperation in America is okay. Well, those are the tactics of today's radical Democratic Party. This is why for years I have pointed this out on the show. This happens every two and four years, and now with every Supreme Court appointment, nearly every one. They disseminated salacious lies about President Trump before and after the election. They advanced bizarre conspiracy theories that one candidate actually paid for. Hookers urinating in beds. They talk about it as if it's truth. They disseminate it as propaganda before elections. They do it to, to start up you know, witch hunt invest investigations and conspiracies. They call people racist, sexist, misogynist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic. That's if Republicans, conservatives want dirty air and water. We drink the water and breathe the air. They want children to die. Well, if you're only going to raise Medicare 7% a year, that means you want to throw your own grandmother off the cliff. We hear it every two and four years. And when these vile accusations of drugging, gang raping teenage girls without evidence, that's, that's not to be believed by the FBI. These are the consequences. That's the reaction. Is this the party you want in power? You want to elect these people in 33 days? Look at your screen. High drama tonight with these four senators. They appear to hold the keys to the Kavanaugh vote. Are they going to give in to this new America of guilt by accusation? Lying, smearing, slander, character bludgeoning of the last 17 days. Forget the last 40 years of this man's life. No corroboration. Are they going to give in to this? Has any of this had any impact on those four senators? Do they believe in the presumption of innocence? That's their question tonight. Do they believe in due process, the rule of law? Do they have common sense and decency? Do they believe that you've got to have some corroboration? Do they believe in our great Constitution? Or are they going to reward forever the slanderous tactics of the hard left that only want power?